folks, and welcome to the Snowy's Camping Show with Ben and Lauren. Today we have got uh, a guest interview. Um, we haven't done one of these for a little while, which is great, but previously we've done our first uh, you might have met, re- remembered that we've we've mentioned we're going to be doing a fridge series this season, and we have had our first episode with uh, Dometic, which was number ninety three. Um, so we've got our second episode with you today. But before we get stuck into it, don't forget to subscribe wherever you're listening to your podcast, and jump into the conversation on our Snowy's uh, cam- camping banter. Is that what it's called now? Camping banter. Facebook camping group. banter yep. Facebook group, um, and also you can obviously get involved through our YouTube socials if you're not someone who does Facebook. Yep. How are you today, Ben? I'm good, thanks. So I'm quite um, interested in today's interview. Yeah, me too. Aussie brand. Yeah, really looking forward to it. So today we are speaking with Evercool and we have uh, Lena and Jamie on the line. How are you? Hey, good, thanks. How are you guys? Hey, guys. Is it, is it Lena or Liana? Liana. 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 All good. My oh, apologies. My apologies. We I, we do ha- well, we do have a Lena in our team, our graphic designer, and it's spelt um a bit differently. So I probably should have picked up on that. Well, I've been in touch with Liana via email before, and I and I've always said Liana, but this morning I read it and went, "There's only one N. Does that mean it's Lena or Liana? Or but it is Liana. Liana. So, sweet. Yeah. yeah anyway, Liana. um, in typical format, we've already gone off on a tangent. I we know. have. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> As you were, Lauren. Sorry, I butted in. That's okay. Um, so obviously we have two of you online today. Can you give us a bit of an uh, introduction to who you guys are and what your role is within Evercool uh, and things like that? Can I start? Yeah. Um, so I'm the head of marketing at Evercool. I've been with Evercool for three and a half years, um, but I'm practically a newbie compared to Jamie. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, been on board now for 24 years. Wow, uh, Okay. Yeah, back in the day, uh, Evercool was just like a fiberglass icebox company. Um, they decided to have a bit of a crack at getting into refrigeration. Uh, that's where that's when I came on the scene. Okay, no worries. So you um, did you have history within refrigeration, Jamie? Like, and that's why you st- you joined Evercool when they were starting that um, development of their business in that area. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, a qualified refrigeration mechanic. Um, I'm a third generation refrigeration mechanic. Okay, so one of okay. the really good ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, they, they contacted me. Um, they they had a go at it by themselves without anyone technical here. Uh, they bought, I think, about five thousand refrigeration units that were built on the Gold Coast and brought them up and put them on there at their ice boxes and I think they saw the whole five thousand of them come back. So oh, wow. I was okay. employed, oh. <laughs> uh, to bring in a bit of technical expertise and we got it up and running and we started to design some product. So how, how long was Evercool around? So twenty five years you've been there, but they were, they existed before you were there? Uh nineteen ninety five, yeah. I think they kicked off. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and, and it was that. Sorry, they were okay. just doing fiberglass ice boxes at that stage. Okay, and their first fridges were literally a, an ice box, which is a really efficient ice box with the compressor attached to the ice box. is is a good way to describe it, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's exactly what it was. They they were making the, the ice boxes and they were buying uh, completed refrigeration systems from this company from the Gold Coast and, and they are virtually just slotting the box, dropping them in and shooting them all. And so the original the original fridges were, yeah, that's exactly how they were built. <laughs> so how did Evercool get started as a business? Um, look, right back, there, there's a couple of uh, businessmen here on the Sunshine Coast. Uh, I think they were pretty heavily involved with uh, commercial fishing and trawlers and stuff like that. And then they did see a bit of a need for someone making ice boxes. They were obviously buying them from somewhere. Um, so they kicked this business off. Uh, there was another company around back then called Bailey's Ice Boxes. Uh, and they, they bought those guys out and, and, and merged it all together and, and full steam into 
been the only ones in Australia making fiberglass glass ice boxes. Um. Chibami, I'm quite interested to know when you say that 5,000 of those first fridges came back, can I ask what, what did Evercool learn from that apart from needing a, a technical person? Like what, <laughs> what, what, or, or is that something you'd rather keep off of the podcast? I mean, what, what, no, was, look, the, what was the, the it's issue? It's a quarter of a century ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's, look, it's in, the, in past. <laughs> no, I mean, it was a good learning curve for, um, for Evercool. Um, they put all their trust in this company uh, on the Gold Coast and, and and trusted in their engineering and what they were doing and, and it was the actual refrigeration system that was at fault. Um, when I was put on, quickly sorted out what the issues were and we, we put a plan in to, to swap all these systems out and, and build something better um, and, and we got everyone back on track again cost the company a little bit of money but we ended up with a i think quite a good fridge okay. and quite a reliable fridge too yeah, right. are any of the founding members of evercool still involved in the company like has it still sort of been kept in ownership of of that original line or has it been taken over by other companies um it, it changed hands about four years ago um okay. but our parent company is still an australian company okay awesome yeah I also just want to really quickly touch on, um, you know, Evercool as a brand. You do mention on your website that you also manufacture for other brands. Is that correct? Are you still doing that? Um, yeah, we do. It, it sort of um, changes over time. I mean, a couple of years ago you would have seen Evercool products in, in pretty much all of the big camping retailers. Um, we sort of dialed back during COVID when we were sort of transitioning back to manufacturing in Australia. Um, and now that's all up and humming. Um, we're definitely in discussions with some businesses to sort of get back into that space a bit more. But, um, yeah, if, if a brand approaches us and wants um, a portable fridge or an icebox and they want their label on it but powered by Evercool, that's definitely something we do. Are you, um, but it, it is something you've done historically. Are you happy to share the like relationships you've had in the past for people who might go, oh, yeah, I've seen one of those. Oh, that's actually made by Evercool. Or is that yeah, so, commercial um, in confidence? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's all out in the open. Um, we made fridges for BCF, um, super cheap auto, Repco, all the sort of big players in the category. So, wow. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I learned something. You today didn't know that. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, um, we we've jumped around in our schedule. I oh, know we haven't. You don't, re- Ben. Ben don't never beforehand. does really well uh, when we jump around on the schedule and don't follow exactly line by line. Do you, Benji? Well, I look down and then I look silly because I'm going. Oh, hang on, what? And I'm up and down. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, so um, a lot of fridge companies, I would say, you know, especially if you're looking at the main one, say Engel and um, Dometic, they sort of basically just have their line of fridges and they come in a variety of sizes. But you guys have a couple of different ranges that obviously all look aesthetically different and um, like talk us through what your different ranges that you offer are and what are the sort of differences between them. If people are looking and they're like, well, what Evercool fridge is best for me, how would they sort of go about nailing that down? Yeah, so I guess you can sort of um, simplify our range into sort of four key categories when we're talking about fridges. So you've got your fiberglass series, which we call Infinity. Um, it's sort of the bee's knees, the best top topping class product that we sell. It's the only marine grade fridge on the market in Australia, not just by Evercool. Um, because it's fiberglass and you can marinise all of the components um, really, if you're considering a portable fridge for any kind of boating application, it's the best thing that you can get. Um, there are a range of customizations available for it. Um, we've been making it since Jamie started with Evercool, so 24 years. So, um, yeah, and I mean, they're built to order. So it's not the sort of product that you can always just walk in and buy. But if you're wanting one and you want it to specifically suit a space or you want the lid to open a certain way, then we're sort of the place to go for that. Um, and okay. that being said, we can build them in a week or two. It's not like you've got to wait months for it like a car. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah if you really want something specific for an application and being marine suitable is important to you, then that's sort of the fridge to go for there. Um, 
And then sort of the next category would be our Down Under series. So we launched Down Under 2 um, nearly 12 months ago. It's sort of our core range fridge freezer. They're all dual zone. They've got all the bells and whistles you could possibly want and app. The lids open both ways. Um, and sort of they're probably our biggest seller when it comes to camper trailers and utes and that sort of setup. We've got a really big presence in the camper trailer and hybrid caravan market um and a huge number of our fridges go in there which is really cool um then i guess you've got platinum and that's sort of a category on its own so our platinum series is really the home of our uprights and our draw fridge um we've got the biggest draw fridge on the market at 40 liters um it runs down our production line on the sunshine coast it's been in the market for years and it's just like a really epic fridge um for someone that probably i guess i'm a bit vertically challenged i'll be the first to admit that <laughs> you've got a really lifted four-wheel drive and you can't quite see inside um a tall chest fridge then the draw fridge is a really great option um and then i mean you've got our explorer series as well it's probably more the budget friendly version of our portable fridge range still a super solid fridge still runs down our production lines on the sunny coast but um doesn't have all of the bells and whistles that our down under series come from and that's sort of what makes it at that bit more of an affordable price point for people getting their first camping fridge so that's sort of a good summary of like our portable fridge range awesome can i ask you about a term you used in your um, your infinity marine grade ones, you said marinized. Is that, is that the term you used? What, what does yes. that mean? Um, so it's a special coating that it, it's sort of in a spray form um, and we apply it to all of the components in the motor compartment um, because they're the only sort of metal type. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of aluminium yeah. and, and copper in there and uh, the aluminium will get corroded. So it's just a protection to, to stop that corrosion. And that's so the, yeah, the, sorry. Um, if you order your fridge marinized from when it's made, we warrant the whole fridge against rust for the life of the fridge. So um, that's why that's sort of an upsell that you can get if you are using it for a marine yeah. purpose. That's pretty cool because it's the biggest issue with the marine fridge is the salt corrosion and, and and rust, right? So I have a question um, because I would say. Uh, a significant number of inquiries that we get on fridges across all models is if I'm out this in the back of my ute and I leave it there all the time and I don't have a canopy, am I going to stuff my fridge up? In that situation, would a normal Evercool fridge be okay or would you be recommending that they choose a marinized one even though it's not salt water? It sort of varies, I guess. Like yeah. a marinized fridge helps. I mean, something that we moved to when we released Down Under 2 with the covers was the covers are actually water resistant. We've taken um, a pretty high pressure hose to the covers and the fridge underneath stays perfectly dry. So um, if you were looking at putting a fridge out on the back of a ute, I'd say definitely invest in a cover. Um, but that being said, I mean, there's different degrees of it being on the back of a ute. And yeah, yeah. Like absolutely <laughs> covered in mud if you drive through a big, like, mud hole somewhere. So I guess just practising common sense. But, yeah, investing in a cover would be um, a really good choice. And, yeah, I mean, Infinity is still a great option for that too. But the cover is sort of what's going to protect it. It and its electronics the best. Yeah, it's the electronics that's going to suffer the most in, in any of the brands. Um, any moisture in those is going to destroy it. And like Leanne said, the cover um, it keeps all moisture off it. It's yeah. Good. So is, is the general recommendation to not store it? We, we do that, get that question a bit, but is your general recommendation to not permanently mount it in the open to have it somewhat protected or like what, what's, what's your guidance there? Yeah, definitely, definitely some sort of cover and uh, to keep the direct sunlight off it. Yeah, it's going to work more efficiently if it's not in the direct sun all mm. the time. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah uh, you can do it, but I mean, best practice would be to cover it in some sort yeah. of way. I mean, all, all the plastics that we use are all UV stabilised so yeah. that they'll handle it. Um, lids keep their shape, which is which is good in the heat. Mm -hmm. um, just maximising the life of just maximising, yeah, yeah. Like anything, if you leave it outside twenty four seven, it's not going to last yeah, as no, long yeah, as absolutely, yeah, yeah, completely. It's like when people um, 
get a good tangent here, but, you know, people get a gazebo and they want to use it as a carport and six months later yeah, yeah. it's like Shredded. basically melted yeah. and it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask yeah. a, a question? We'll get into a few more uh, things on um, compressors and stuff later, but efficiency is a – when someone's researching a, a, a fridge, there's quite a focus on the, the dra- amp draw, right? And it is, it is an important element, but it's so variable. What's – your response to someone who's talking about the most efficient free draw, you know, what's the the maximum power draw and, and sort of your testing regime around that? So the most important thing that we talk to customers about when it comes to power draw is average power consumption. Um, focusing on power consumption when an appliance first turns on is useless if you're looking at something sort of long-term because every sort of appliance while it's first like warming up and everything will always draw a bit more power than when it's running um, all the time. All of the power consumption figures that we advertise um, are at 32 degrees ambient, which is a much more sort of real-life sort of temperature scenario um, that most people would come into, whether it be in the back of their car or in a camper trailer. Um, and the figures that we give you are when you have one compartment at minus 16 as a freezer and one compartment at about two or three degrees as a fridge. So um, keeping an eye out and paying attention to it, what temperatures they're advertising, your average power consumption can make a huge difference. Um, most companies, most companies, their figures are uh, set at 24, 25 degrees, which yeah. obviously lowers the power consumption. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, yeah, all of our power consumption figures are based on the fridge being um, having proper ventilation at yep. 32 degrees ambient. Um, and then, yeah, one is a fridge, one is a freezer, which we think sort of the most common scenario that people would be using their portable mm-hmm. fridge at. Um, and, yeah, I mean, our down under two sort of knocks it out of the park when it comes to power consumption. Our big 95-litre fridge um, averages 2.2 amps an hour at fridge and freezer in a big 95-litre dual zone, which yeah, is okay. yeah, mm. we're, we're stoked with it. <laughs> <laughs> and is that power consumption a primary focus in your design um, for, for efficiency or are there other elements as well? And I ask that question because it seems to – be the thing on people, the forefront of a customer's mind when they're buying a fridge is I look for the most efficient um, efficient option and go from there. But in, in your approach to making the fridges, is that the primary place you start with? Yeah, it's, it's, a, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the, the most important ones. Um, yeah. I mean, you take into account capacity is really important to a consumer so is power consumption but then there's a fine balance between well i want it to have this amount of insulation to be able to you know keep up with that performance that we want but mm. not jeopardizing the space and size offering that you can give to the customer so yeah it's, when, <laughs> yeah. when you look at all the all the top brands their, their sizings are very similar um you know if, if we if we need to fit in a camper trailer because uh, we're replacing someone else, like be it Dometic or Angle or, or whoever, uh, we all try to keep our sizes pretty, pretty well much the same. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the the with with the um, power consumption though, that that is right at the top of our list. And if anyone wanted to contact us, we we do um, power consumption testing from down at 10 degrees, right through to 50 degrees. Uh, we do it as a fridge, 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 freezer, freezer, freezer. So we, we've got all that information here if people were wanting to chase it up. Okay, that's okay. good to know. And you guys are pretty open for support too, aren't you? Like you, you're, um, you can contact Evercool pretty much anywhere if you've got an issue with your fridge and you guys are there to, to offer that, that after-sale support as well. Yeah. Sure. I'm just going to step back a little bit. Now, a lot of people would probably know Evercool more so from the Travel Mate series. Is the down under sort of like a, a step up or an evolution of, of that with obviously your aesthetics and everything changing? Is that sort of replacing that Travel Mate in your range? Yes. So um, during COVID, we sort of encountered this situation where um, lots of other businesses and brands were bringing out a cheaper, inferior 
made version of the travel mate some brands would even claim that we made it for them when we didn't oh, wow. um and it was getting to a point where there were so many copycats in the market and we sort of looked at all the expertise that we had we said why are we still importing a fridge that everyone could buy when we could make a fridge in australia for a better or like same competitive price but way better quality mm -hmm. um and so we sort of took that opportunity and we scaled up all of our production on the Sunshine Coast and we put about half a million dollars into developing the Down Under series. Same footprint that you'll find Travel Mate had, but it's made in Australia and the quality of its componentry and its power consumption and performance is just like off the charts, yeah. yeah. Um, so if someone was looking for a fridge that size, Down Under 2 definitely ticks the boxes in terms of its dimensions, but... In sort of every other category, I think it kicks its butt. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Now, I mean, we've talked a lot about Australian manufacturing or at least referenced it, um, which has obviously been especially with COVID and, you know, part of me sometimes thinks, do we still have to keep saying COVID because it's just a, we're just all a little bit over it, aren't we? But, um, yeah. it, it like, you can't deny that that did have a massive impact on manufacturing and, you know, the camping and outdoor industry in general as a whole. A lot of people claim to be Australian made but for the most part, they're Australian assembled, for example. Um, how exactly how much of your manufacturing process is a hundred like is Australian made? So across the four series that we talked about, Platinum and Explorer are assembled and commissioned here, and we're very clear about that in all of our messaging. Yep. Um, our Down Under and our Infinity Series actually have the formal Australian-made accreditation, so the green and gold triangle. Um, and so that's gone through all of the testing requirements for us to actually gain that accreditation. And what it means is that even though we source our component tree, um, some domestic, some international, the fridge is engineered, refrigerated, all the electrical work, all the refrigeration work. We even print our product manuals in Australia. It's all done here. Um, we test every single fridge that comes off the production line. Even our fridge app that's with our Down Under fridges was made in Australia too. So any and every opportunity that we have to do something or get it from Australia, we absolutely do. Um, and, yeah, that's that's sort of it. That's how we managed to get our accreditation and something we're really, really proud to sort of show off when it comes mm. to those fridges. Yeah, especially this day and age as well, I think. Have you found um, there's been like quite a positive reception to that? Yeah, yeah, people love it. I mean, I think you can spot that green and gold kangaroo from a mile away if you see it in a store. Um, and, yeah, the feedback's been amazing. Everyone loves that we're bringing production back to Australia and the fact that we can still hit a really competitive price point for consumers, they're even more impressed with that. Yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. because I think – oh, sorry, Jamie, you go. I was going to say years ago Made in Australia was quite big um, and then it went through a stage – back in the 2000s where um, just price price point was driving at all. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, Australian made is, is coming along back. It's, it's, it's really popular. COVID really popular. made us rethink Australian made a bit. We noticed that with the products we sell here, that people started looking for products made here because I think it highlighted our dependence on what was coming from overseas. Yeah, but I think it's really impressive point. that you guys can uh, create what you do at the price point you do because, like you say, it is competitive with all the other leading brands and it's um, obviously uh, enough of it's made here in our country to get that little green and gold triangle, so that's pretty impressive. Now, I want to quickly, um, before we move on, I want to talk about fiberglass versus plastic shell. Now, you use fiberglass and plastic shells in your ice boxes and you also do it in your fridges. My understanding is that fiberglass is a little bit more um, or a little bit less easy care in the sense that it doesn't take much to break it. And I don't know if if that's just my perception, if that's incorrect, but sort of what's the benefits of fiberglass? Why would someone choose to go with a fiberglass option over a plastic shell option? Yeah, look, fiberglass is is very durable. Um, you, you really have to belt it with a with a hammer to start cracking it. Okay. Uh, or, or doing serious damage to it. 
Well, yeah, uh, even like boats and surfboards are all made from can be made yeah, from glass. It, it can be a hardy, hardy material. Yeah. Uh, as far as um, longevity, uh, fiberglass is, is going to last a hell of a lot long, longer than the uh, the plastic boxes. Um, plastic boxes left out in the sun can can warp or delaminate if they're in direct sunlight, whereas your fiberglass can take that. Um, extremely low temperatures. Uh, we get people using dry ice in the fiberglass, whereas we wouldn't really recommend it in the in the plastic boxes. So it's it's a very very durable, uh, long lasting material if you look after it. Yeah, and I mean fiberglass is non porous. It won't absorb any smells, which is why it's perfect for fishing and marine. Um, it can't rust either, and I mean its ice keeping abilities are sort of the next level. That's why. Fiberglass for us will always be the top tier of fridge, but because all the cabinets are like handcrafted and the manufacturing process for us is nowhere near as efficient as, as some of our other fridges, um, is why it sort of comes with that higher price point. But we regularly get customers that have 20 year old fiberglass fridges and ice boxes coming in, just buying a new bungee strap or something like that, just to freshen it up a little bit. And yeah, they last and get passed down through generations of families, which is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. If, if Sorry, you mentioned um, fiberglass, like in terms of a, a shell, does the fiberglass material provide more of an insulation than the plastic shell? Like if you had the same capacity fiberglass uh, ice box and, the, and a plastic ice box, would the fiberglass one outperform the plastic one? Oh, definitely. Okay. Um, yeah, the, look, the, the, there is some form of uh, insulating capacity there with, with the fiberglass shell compared to the plastic. Uh, they reflect heat a bit better, whereas plastic ones can do it. So, okay. it has to do with the colour too. Like fiberglass is white, right? So that reflects heat more. Or is that yes? A white, yeah. is, white is the perfect colour. <laughs> That's what I myself I personally hate about a lot of the uh, new fridges coming in. They're all blacks and greys. Yeah. Um, so we compromised them down under two, and we made the lid a colour that the cabinets like. <laughs> yeah, black chalk. <laughs> <laughs> like house roofs, right? We've got all these dark house roofs and black bricks that we're making houses out of now, and then we just put massive air conditioners in them to try and cool them down. <laughs> it just seems contradictory. Uh, am I right? It's also saying a fiberglass where we, we say you can hit it with a hammer. Um, um, and it cracks, but it's just cosmetic for the most part, isn't it? It's still functional, even though you might have a dent or a crack in your fiberglass. Yeah, and the glass can just be repaired. You can get it repaired. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Whereas Thank if you me. sort of crack plastic, you can't you can't fix it. So. <laughs> That's a good point. Where do you get it repaired? Yeah. Just take it to your local surfboard ding repair. Yeah, those guys, <laughs> those guys will do it. Yeah. Um, Anyone who does fiberglass repairs. Yeah. Some people like to have a crack at it themselves. I'll buy a surfboard repair kit. Yeah, They're right. pretty cheap. Yeah. I never thought of that, repairing a fiberglass yeah. icebox. DIY mm. fiberglasser. So you see your C-Cop processor is in your fridge. Is that – that's correct, right? Did I – I got that right. You use it's a, a compressor. Yeah, is it, <laughs> yeah. C, is it C-Cop? Yeah, it is C-Cop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, is it, I just had this thought in I my think you mind said processor. Of, because you know Danfoss slash C cop. Sometimes when I say C cop still, I'm like, that's not right. It's Danfoss, but they're you essentially said, I the think same you thing. C cop processor, but I'm being picky there because oh, that's what you've written here. So, never mind. It's a compressor. Anyway, but anyway, stop. The, yeah, <laughs> stop. Um, <laughs> so obviously, there are some brands that develop their own com, um, compressor, and there are some other compressors on the market. Why have you guys gone with that one? So, well, <laughs> I'll just start. So um, CCOP was formerly known as Danfoss. CCOP bought Danfoss. So um, whether you say Danfoss or CCOP, it's same. much the same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but their current name is CCOP. Um, honestly, they're just like the best 12-volt compressor you can buy. <laughs> Straight up, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Danfoss, Danfoss have been around since the beginning of refrigeration. Um, the range of compressors they make, uh, mains voltage uh, in, in varying countries, it's in the millions. And um, all that technology that they had from their mains voltage compressors was put into their DC compressors. Uh, it, it, it comes down more to the components in them are very highly spent. 
So when you listen to a seat, you can't even hear a seat got compressor running. They're that well balanced. Um, the componentry is really good. Compared to, say, your Chinese compressors, uh, well, Chinese compressors are traditionally very noisy, um, a little bit out of balance, and, 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 and that sort of adds to their downfall as well. You, you may only get two, three, four, five years out of a, a Chinese compressor, uh, and we see a lot. Uh, whereas your your seat hot compressor will go a good fifteen twenty years, and right. so I'm assuming there's also potentially the advantage to that if you're someone who's travelling Australia and you've got a twelve volt fridge, majority of refrigeration mechanics would be able to work on a seat hot because it's such oh, an yeah. industry. Yeah. yeah, right. So it's like we're talking like the Land Cruiser of fridge compressors, yeah. basically. Absolutely. That's a good way of putting yeah. it. Like <laughs> just about every fridge mechanic will have a, a, a module, that, the electronic module that runs a CCOP compressor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where the Chinese compressors are specific, they're like their electronics are specific to that compressor. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, and whilst we're on this, sorry, Benji, I sure. know you keep going to ask a question, but whilst we're on this, I know um, – um, some of the other larger brands like have dedicated service centres all around Australia. Do you guys have the same thing for your fridges? Yeah, we've got a network of over 100 service agents across the country. So if we can't help you, they definitely can. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. that's good to know. I wanted to ask about um, sort of your um, process from like design and, and testing to ending up with a product that hits the market. Obviously the latest thing you did was the down under two fridges, but um, what, what's your approach there? But do you, do you have a, a solid system of where you start from to prototypes, manufactured design, and then goes out to the consumer? Yeah. So the NPD process, new product development, something that Jane and I work on together pretty closely. Um, for some context, I mean, Down Under 2 took us about 18 months to, from concept to market launch. Um, you know, we sort of listen to feedback from customers, what they hate and what they love, um, and try and take that feedback and then the new technology and what more can we do with power and consumption, what features are sort of new and current, and um, then we give that information to this wizard over here and he'll <laughs> spit out something amazing. So from, you know, scribbles on a piece of paper to CAD drawings and prototypes, um, everything's sort of done um, as a part of that process. We'll probably go through, I don't know, four or five physical prototypes before we get to the one that, you know, is our goal and one, that's what we want to run with. Um, and, I mean, given that we manufacture here, um, we've got so much control over exactly what component goes where and timings of processes and stuff, which is where Jamie's expertise really comes into play. Um, and then sort of the launch into market, we we will pre-sell sort of anywhere from three to six months in advance um, and then the launch into market all to do with how quickly Jamie can make them all for everyone that's bought them. So. <laughs> So with your down under fridges, you had you brought out down under, and then there was down under two, and and uh, the the evolution from down under to down under two was a big jump forward. That it just seemed to to be like you 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 launched that and must have listened to a lot of feedback, and then didn't really reinvent it, but you added so many more benefits to the down under two series. What what was what was it that you learned from that going from the first to the to the second? Down Under One was our first real crack at bringing back Aussie-made fridges. So for us, that was the first opportunity we had to really sort of tidy up production, figure out what's working, what's not, and create a really strong platform for a refrigeration system. And then we took everything that we liked about Down Under One and turned it into the fridge that answered everyone's questions. I mean... Um, We've got a Bluetooth app, the bi-directional lids. You can choose your own lid colour if you really want to. Like anything that a customer sort of said that they wanted or wished down under one hat, we tried to put everything into it. And we already knew before we launched down under two that the platform of the fridge that we built it off had been working in the market for two years already and it was just performing flawlessly that we knew it was sort of a no-brainer to bring out the second Second version. Yeah, the down under two was a lot easier to put together. Um, like Anna said, uh, all the refrigeration that was worked out on the down under one. 
Uh, it was more of a cheaper launch, um, yeah. full metal cast. Uh, didn't have a, a lot of bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. um, with the second one, up and down under two, there was a lot of injection moulding, um, a lot of money spent. Um, yeah, I mean, the cabinet's the literally got ever cool embossed into yeah. the side of it, so... Yeah. And then there's a lot of little little hidden features in there that we've put in to help our techs and uh, the uh, technical people we've got around Australia. Um, there's some little added bits in there. So we, we're looking out for them as well as looking out for the customer and looking out for, for ourselves as well. Yeah, I'd say it's one of the best fridges we've ever released to market. Mm, easy. It's a handsome-looking fridge, I reckon. Yeah, and it, it looks a bit different as well, which is like it's eye catching. And the yeah, the white, yeah, mm. yeah. So good. when you're talking um, a lot about customer feedback, what are the main avenues that you uh, pull your customer feedback from? Is it direct contact, or, or do you have people like trolling secretly Facebook groups and you know looking for the general chatter around the brand? Um, honestly, it's a bit of everything. I mean, we've also got a huge retail network across the country as well. So majority of who we sell to are camper trailers and hybrid caravan manufacturers. So they get a lot of feedback from their customers. We're getting it fed through retailers, our reps. I mean, even if we go to stores and do product training, we're hearing it from the store managers and the customers themselves. So, yeah, it's it's a really broad mix of where we're getting the feedback from, which I think gives us a really sort of good generalised understanding of where the product's sitting in the market and what we've got to do next. And how do you sort of have a general plan of how often you might review a particular product or is it more just play it by ear based on that feedback you're getting which would drive, say, a, re a revision? Probably a bit of both. I mean, yeah. if, if Jamie has an incredible idea, we're not going to not do it just because it doesn't fit to our timeline, but yeah. um, it is very heavily um, impacted by what the market's doing in customer feedback as well. We're not just going to launch this product for the sake of it if we don't feel that it really answers anything for our customers or, or doesn't suit the brand, but... Um, no, we, we're always working on yeah. this stuff as well. Yeah, there's always something. New product. Mm -hmm. um, you know, down under threes, obviously, got ideas already kicking around. Um, yeah. 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 So, okay, so well, heard it here first. Is that uh, public knowledge that there's a down under three on the market? <laughs> <laughs> it's a long the process takes 18 months for it's a pipe dream at this okay. stage pipe dream yeah. at this stage so if, anyone, yeah, like, if you're listening long. thinking I'll wait around for that there's no guarantees on when it's going to hit the market oh, but hey, in the meantime like down over to the great fridge <laughs> <laughs> so if you had to pull something from Evercool that sets you apart from all other brands what would be kind of like your one liner we make portable camping fridges in Australia designed by Aussies for Aussies. I don't know a better way to sum yeah. up our brand or what we strive to do. I think the for Aussies by Aussies is a, is a good brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, uh, yeah look, look, I've been travelling over to China for probably the last 10, 12 years. Um, before COVID, I was probably going a couple of times a year and I've visited just about every factory that makes 12 volt refrigeration in China. Um, the thing that we have here and that they don't have is, and, and I've noticed it with every factory I visit is their uh, their engineers, like everyone's fridges are the same. They've got a lid, a cabinet, they've got a compressor and an evaporator and, and so forth. But it's how it's engineered and, and how it's put together that makes a difference. Um, We've been working on refrigeration, portable refrigerators here and repairing them, seeing what issues they had for the last, you know, quarter of a century, whereas the Chinese guys are just putting stuff together and hoping that it works. Um, and, and we can see it in, in the Chinese product that we test against ours. It, it doesn't even come close. Yeah. I assume that's considering, um, when you say how it's put together, considering like vibration, how it's transported, um, it's the wobble and wiggle and end up wearing out and all, all of those sort of things being made for the corrugated roads. Is, that's I'm assuming that's what you mean when you say how it's put together. Yeah, yeah, yeah look, it, it's it's how it's designed as well. Um, the whole system has to – the refrigeration is a technical 
garbage, but the whole system has to be balanced properly. Uh, the components have to match up. The evaporator sizing is very, very critical um, for it to work properly. Um, whereas the Chinese guys will just put as much pipe in there as they can, and okay. that's not the way it works. Things like pipe vibration, um, you see a lot of uh, pipe shear where copper pipe, if it's moved too much, it'll harden and snap, and you see that a lot in the Chinese cabinets, uh, especially if they've done some big trips. Um, yeah, yeah, pipe vibration, vibration loops, um, yeah. there's, there's a lot to it, um, and... and yeah, it, it, it makes a big difference between yeah, I mean, fridges and fridges from here. We road tested down under to up to Cape York. Um, I broke my car more than anything, but the fridge <laughs> hung perfectly the whole time. It's committed um, to the cause did. there. It's, uh, <laughs> the car's busted, but the fridge is fine. Work expense, oh. right? <laughs> The, the corrugations were insane. We did the old telly, everything. The fridge didn't skip a beat. And at one point my car was sort of stuck like this for a while. We, I mean, yeah, like the, the fridges just perform and are designed for everything an Aussie would want to do in their Forby. So, okay. Awesome. Good stuff. Um, listener questions. We're going to jump on to listener questions now. I've, so I've got my own listener question first. Do you? <laughs> or do you want to go first? Okay. I was just going to ask about covers. Um, when you test your fridges, do you test them without the cover on? Yes. And do you recommend uh, – we, we mentioned covers before for weather protection. Do you recommend a cover is used and if it's used, does it improve efficiency? No. Nah, look, it's – if a fridge needs a cover to improve its efficiency, uh, there's something with the fridge. Um, okay. The cover there is really just to protect your investment, uh, keep the weather off it. Like I say, electronics um, don't like moisture at all. Uh, so they're there to protect your investment. Yeah, our, our covers are insulated anyway, but it's not going to make a significant difference to your power consumption of your fridge. Um, yeah, it's more protecting what you've got, I mean, yeah, if you go touring around Australia, everything, you've got your car moves around all the time and, mm. you know, you don't want to be scratching your $1,000 fridge. I have um, an extension to that question because often you hear people go, oh, well, covers actually make your fridge more inefficient because they can work in the opposite way of making your fridge warmer if potentially, you know, it's been a really hot ambient night and the insulative cover can trap warmth in your fridge. I don't know. Do you have anything to say about that? Uh, the, the, only, the only trouble I've seen with covers is a lot of the Chinese fridges will have the, the component in, inside a Chinese fridge called a condenser, which is like a radiator in a car, and that's what gets rid of the heat. Um, some of the Chinese fridges will run their condenser in the wall of the cabinet. So okay. if you put a cover on it, it traps all that heat inside the cover and it just makes its way back inside the fridge. Um, okay. Our fridges don't work that way, but, yeah, normally if it's a normal fridge, a, a cover won't, won't do that. Okay, cool. Cool. So real listeners questions now. Real listeners questions. Not me. Uh, <laughs> now, this one is probably a bit of a, a pointy-ended question, but feel free to um, just say however you want. And it contradicts what we said at the start of the it show. Does. So we don't want to talk badly about other brands, but, but this is a, um, so it's a loaded question. Robert from YouTube wants to know how, let's just go with you down under fridge, um, how that would compare to an angle. So... Be nice. Our fridges, I guess, and we've talked about this the whole episode, our fridges yeah. are different to everyone else because we're the only manufacturer that makes our fridges in Australia. That's sort of our, our biggest difference. Mm -hmm. um, we use CCOP compressors, which are the best 12-volt compressor that you can get, um, and our fridges actually hold a, a tropical rating, which, which is the highest rating that you can get for a portable fridge, and that's to do with the ambient temperatures at which it will perform at. So um, we've got the highest rating that you can possibly get um, on our Down Under Series mm -hmm. fridge, and that just makes them perform even better. So, Yeah, yeah look, <laughs> uh, the, the, the tropical rating is a good one. It, it, it's If a fridge has a tropical rating, that means it will operate in temperatures in 43 degrees and above. Um, angles are a very good fridge, love an angle. Uh, they do struggle a little bit at that high end in the, in the top ambient, but that's got a lot to do with the, the compressors they use. Okay. okay. You, um, 
talking about tropical rating, does humidity affect your fridge? Not just, you know, straight up temperature, but humidity? Yeah, look, humidity does play a part in in refrigeration in general, uh, high humidity. Okay. It, it, it adds that extra component to it. It's a little bit harder to, to, to work in. But I'm assuming the fact that you guys are Queenslanders, you'd be all across that. We're here all the I, I was actually, um, I am a f- actually technically a Queenslander and often when I go back to visit my family, I'm just like, oh, my God, it's like 20 degrees but I'm actually going to die because it's like 90% humidity. Really? Whereas like here it's like a 40-degree day. I can lay on the beach and cook like a sausage and have a swim and just be fine. But you 20, like, 20 like degrees humid- and you drown in Queensland just like walking the down the street. <laughs> Anyway. To relax. <laughs> okay, next Look, question. The, so lots of circle work on Facebook has asked uh, quite a long question. So he's got a TMDZ60. So that, that was that one of the Travel Mate models? Yeah, Travel yeah. Mate Jewel Zone. It's in the name, Benji. Whatever. I was just asking for your opinion <laughs> on that one. Um, I was testing these guys. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Uh, my TMDZ, TMDZ60 in the back compartment holds 29 cans of beer. Why not 30? So that, that is two questions. <laughs> so that's, that's his first one. <laughs> well, well. Um, that's a funny question. Okay, so how many, how many cans you can fit in your fridge varies depending on if you you're stacking your cans upright or laying them on their side. Just want to get that out there. Sometimes you can even do a mixture up and sideways and you can fit even more in. So okay. without physically having a fridge here to check, can't quite <laughs> answer why you can't fit an extra one uh, in there. Buy so, some pre-mix. Pre-mix can come in real small cans. <laughs> okay. some pre-mix. Or those little thin gin cans you can fit heaps yeah. of them in We should there, run, so. run a competition so, of um, who can fit the most cans in yeah, there. In, right. in there so, so the answer to that is do you, you might need to just do the puzzle differently. Um, <laughs> so second question is – What's with the bubbling noise? He says, it doesn't bother me anymore, but when I'm with people, they always say it's making a noise. Now, I, I know what he's talking about here, but I'll, I'll let you guys answer it in case I'm wrong. <laughs> the, the gurgling noise? It is so normal. The bubbling it gurgling, is. yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's just a refrigerant. It's feeding into the evaporator. You will get gurgling. And your fridge at home will make the same noise. Yeah. Yep. Makes the same. Is there yeah. um, a particular reason why potentially one fridge might do that more than another? Oh, look, the, the, where the refrigerant is fed into the evaporator, um, some manufacturers feed in from the top, others, and which is probably way, feed in from the bottom. Um, when a fridge cycles off, you will get refrigerant still feeding into that evaporator. You will get a bit of a, a, a bubbling, gurgling noise. If there's a little bit of oil in there as well, it, it can all add to it. But it's, it's a normal thing. You'll get it in commercial domestic fridge at home yeah camping fridges it probably just depends on how close you are to your fridge and if you're actually listening to it or around it a lot most people probably just miss it yeah nothing to worry about as i hear it in my fridge um i've got an i've got an angle but yeah, yeah, I yeah. Hear it in my- <laughs> <laughs> was you the right that question wasn't it sorry say it again would you write that angle question? That's wasn't right. It? Yeah. So now I know. That, yeah. Now I know there's nothing wrong with my angle. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Last one. So the last one is actually a pretty good question. Um, mm. Aaron on Facebook, he's one of our regular uh, listeners. Love his contributions. Anyway, Aaron says, or everyone says, sorry, that a full fringe, fringe, fringe. Full fringe. Do you want to say that again? <laughs> so Aaron on Facebook says. What is a full fringe? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. A full fridge runs more efficiently and will draw less power over a 24-hour period than an empty fridge, assuming all other variables are identical. A full fridge will run more efficiently than an empty fridge. Reason being is that your food and drinks, when they're cold, um, the temperature won't fluctuate anywhere near as much as the air temperature fluctuates. So if your fridge is full with cold stuff, the temperature inside the fridge won't change anywhere near as often as if your fridge was empty, which means the fridge doesn't have to run as often or for as long to maintain the temperature. So essentially the the food just acts as like a stable thermal mass inside the fridge ultimately. It's exactly what it does. Yeah. That, that obviously doesn't work if that massive food is, say, 
chilled to one degrees and you've got your, your fridge set at zero, the fridge is going to keep working to try and chill all of that food down to zero before it cycles off, right? Like the, it's got to be cold food in the fridge. You can't just fill it with food and then wonder why it cycles all the time. Yeah, no, that's right. It's once it's down the temperature and running. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How often do um, – this is my listener question now because I forgot to ask it. How often do your fridges do a duty cycle? That's a how long is a piece of string question. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that all depends on lots of your ambient we've got to set out, what product you've got in there. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a hard one. Look, it, during during uh, winter, we'll see our fridges run for probably a quarter of the time, uh, three quarters off. Um, as it starts to get a bit warmer, obviously that starts to even out. Uh, and as it gets hotter, uh, you'll see your you know, you're know, on cycles a lot longer. But so, it, it, it's a real a hard one to answer. So does it have um, – is there a particular sort of increment of time where your internal thermometer's testing? Is that reading the temperature? Like how, how often is it checking the temperatures? Oh, it, it, it's reading the temperature every second. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it cuts so, off when that temperature drops below a certain degree below – Whatever it's set at. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, with with any refrigerator, the way it works is like if you set it at two degrees, uh, the fridge will pull down to two degrees, and and then there's normally like a travel on. That's why you see that it might get down to zero on the display because yep. the refrigerant's still actually feeding into the evaporator when the fridge is cycled off. Um, we have a three degree differential. It's set in all of our fridges, so. Once it gets back up to five degrees, it'll cut back in again. So that, that's why you see that that swing on the on the display. Um, and this is the exact same way that your fridge at home would run too. The only difference is not normally it's not normally displayed on your fridge at home. Um, it's mm. like if you didn't have it set that way, your fridge would just like run nonstop. But you don't have that in a portable fridge or your fridge at home. You just don't often see the actual temperature displayed on the front of your fridge like you would with a camping fridge. And, and, and this is what you were saying before about your product being a, a, a thermal mass that, that's holding its temperature. Even though you can see that five, six degree swing on the display as it runs and cycles on and off, the actual product temperature doesn't move at all. So if mm. it's at two degrees, uh, for the 15, 20, 30 minutes that it's off, uh, the the product doesn't change temperature at all. Okay. It's only the air that changes temperature. Yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. Um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm all questioned out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> have you guys got anything to add about Evercore that you want our listeners to know or have we covered off on all bases? We're pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. The Aussie Made story is great. And if you haven't, I think anyone who hasn't already looked at it, check out the Down Under 2 range because they are a pretty cool-looking fridge, mm. uh, well-equipped with all the all the bells and whistles now. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Thanks so much for joining us, Liana and Jamie. Really appreciate oh, your yeah. time this morning. And, um, yeah, I've definitely learnt a lot. I'm not ashamed to say that, you know, obviously evercool has been around for a while, but I think when people first think of fridges, they'll go to Angle or Waco or whatever. So I really love learning more about Evercool. Um, mm. Yeah, and how it's obviously made specifically for us Aussie campers. Yep. Good Excellent. range of fridges. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Appreciate cheers. your time. That was a good chat. That was a great chat. Really appreciated that. And second, second, our second in episode. the in the fridge series. Yep. So um, tick that off. It's actually happening. It is. Don't forget to tune in next fortnight for another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. Um, but again, until then, don't forget to subscribe and join in the conversations. Thanks, Thanks so much for joining us. See, you See next ya. Time. Bye.